this is a real simple guitar synthesizer that I built in like a, a half a day using Reactor. And this is one of the really cool things you can do with the Boss SY1000 because the USB stream gives you access to all six individual string outputs. So if I go and look under the structure of this uh, <clears throat> uh, synthesizer that I built, you'll actually see there's six different modules uh, named for each string. And then I have uh, controls over here for each string, for each input. I have a slave pitch control and then I have a filter control as well. So basically I built one synthesizer module, I built one voice and then uh, duplicated it, you know, five more times and then built some master controls. So I have some controls like a slave pitch and input filter that are unique to each string. And then we have some overall controls like uh, filter modulation. So this patch is called slow filter modulation. And then we have another patch. Let's see. Uh, oh, well, uh, uh, square wave mod. And then uh, there's some sort of crazier stuff like uh, extreme modulation. And there's also electric distortion. This is kind of gnarly. So um, let's talk about uh, what you need to do first uh, to get this going. If you wanted to do something like this on your own, you wanted to create your own guitar synthesizer because if you've got an SY1000 and you've got something like, say, Reactor, if you go to the uh, uh, Native Instruments um, uh, community for Reactor, there are like thousands and thousands of different plugins and modules and things that people have built. And you can start to bring those into Reactor and start to build, you know, all kinds of crazy stuff. So I have another video that talks about resynthesis uh, where I use a, a guitar synthesizer module that was uh, created by Mark Smart. Now, this is nothing nearly as cool as what he did, but it, it's a very basic guitar synthesizer. So first off, if you want to be using uh, Reactor with um, the SY1000, the first thing that I recommend that you do, and uh, I mentioned this in my other video as well, is to install the Boss uh, Tone Studio. And I recommend doing that because uh, it's got a great tuner built into it to tune your guitar. But it's also uh, handy because if, if you've got the Boss Tone Studio installed and it boots up and it runs and it works, then you can feel pretty confident that, that uh, you've resolved any potential issues with drivers or anything like that. Uh, that if, if the Tone Studio is up and running, then you should be able to fire up just about anything else and be able to get that as work, to work as well. So let's go back over to Reactor. Now it's very important that you configure Reactor to take advantage of the signals from the SY1000. So I'm gonna go under audio and MIDI settings. Your software is probably gonna be a little bit different if you're not using Reactor. And you can see we have under audio, core audio, that's the audio for the Mac operating system. The device that I have selected is the SY1000. And then the sample rate is 48K because that's the sample rate for the SY1000. Now under routing, you can see we have inputs and outputs for inputs, I have reactor input one through eight mapped to the eight inputs from the SY1000. So one through eight over here, one through eight over here. And then under outputs, I did exactly the same thing. We have reactor one through eight on the left and reactor one through eight on the right. You probably have noticed that um, for these purposes, the, the uh, signals from reactor are using uh, base zero uh, where uh, the, the first input is zero instead of one, which is probably from a computer programming point of view more accurate, but don't let that throw you. You're just going to map uh, one through eight to one through eight. Uh, inputs and outputs one and two represent the main uh, outputs from the SY1000. And then we have three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And these map to the individual strings. So your low E is reactor eight, seven is your A string, six is your D string, G, B, and then reactor three is the high E string. So if you look into the manual, uh, you may feel like there's a lot of information there. Do I have to have some special settings inside of the SY1000? And you know what? There's pretty much no way to go wrong with um, the settings inside of the SY1000 because it, um, this is the, uh, the, the reference manual. If we zoom in here, 
we can notice that uh, under audio, we have these different settings, but for every audio routing setting, we always have the divided output from the guitar going to the GK setting and then going to the computer. It really doesn't matter how, what, what all you choose, this is always going to be taking place. So it's very easy to get signals into the computer. These other settings are about, if you're doing something on resynthesis, I've got a video on resynthesis where we record tracks and then play them back. In this case, all we want to do is get the signals from the uh, guitar and then process them with Reactor. And that's pretty easy to set up. Just to have a look real quick, if you're curious to how we have things set up over here in the Tone Studio, if I go under System and I go under USB settings, uh, I have the audio setting right now. It's from Resynthesis from uh, the previous video I did. I can change it to standard and it's still going to work uh, just, just fine for, for driving my uh, SY, uh, for, for driving the uh, reactor synthesis. Now, I do have the volume turned down on the guitar, the GK volume. If I bring in the GK volume, I can actually kind of, it's kind of cool. I can combine the output from the, uh, the guitar synthesis in the SY-1000 uh, with whatever I'm doing inside of uh, Reactor. So um, I'm going to take you through how to build this guitar synthesizer. I'm not going to go into complete detail because it would make, take hours and I don't think you want to watch a video that's that, that goes on for hours and hours but I think we can go through enough uh, to give you an idea of how this works so I'm going to go to reactor and I'm going to choose new ensemble so I'm going to save changes nope and so this is a new ensemble in uh, reactor you can see we've got two inputs and two outputs now two inputs is not going to do it because we want to get access to those uh, additional strings the individual outputs from each string so in Reactor, I'm just going to hit the return key or the enter key and uh, this little menu pops up. What do you want to do? Well, I want to add an input port. So I'm going to click on input port and Reactor adds a new port. And what's really cool is it jumps to the next available input port, which is input port number three, which if you recall from earlier is actually the high E string. If I hit return again and then hit return one more time, you can see it defaults to the last thing that I used, which is an input port. Now I've got input port four. And I can do that for five, six, seven, and eight. And that's all it took. Once I have those basic settings set up in Reactor, where I said that I wanted to use the SY1000 uh, as for my audio hardware, uh, this is all it takes to get access to all those signals uh, from the guitar uh, uh, and then process them inside of Reactor. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So uh, what I thought would be helpful is this guitar synthesizer that we're building, it's a super basic guitar synthesizer. And, and some people might argue that maybe it's, it's not even a true guitar synthesizer, but just sort of a fancy effect pedal. Uh, I'll let someone else decide that. But uh, we're going to start off by adding, I'm going to hit the enter key again. We're going to add an oscillator. And we need to add an oscillator that has um, uh, internal synchronization, uh, uh, external synchronization available to it. So we're going to add a pulse oscillator with sync, meaning we can bring in a outside audio source and sync or force the pitch of this oscillator. So this is our oscillator right here. And I'm going to add for pitch, I want to add a, a pitch control. So I'm going to right click and I'm going to create a control for pitch. And then I'm going to right click and I'm just going to create a constant for my amplitude so that we know that we have some signal. And real quick, all I have to do is connect this to an output and we're going to hear this oscillator. And it's going to be kind of loud. <laughs> so what I'm going to do is uh, add a, a mixer. So let's type in MIX. Here's amplifier mixer. And uh, I'm going to connect the output to this mixer. Now, uh, later on, this is going to be replaced by a noise gate in the final product. But uh, just to speed things along, I'm just going to use a basic mixer and then turn it up and down as we go through this video. I'm going to create a control. And uh, it's going to be a level control. The default on this is minus 60 dB. I'm going to change it to minus 90. So I get more than the usual range of control. Now let's go over here and let's edit this. Here we go. So there's my level control. And now if I take the output and connect it to my two outputs over, wait, 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 wait. before we do this, let's turn the volume down. Okay. And we're going to take the output here to one, the output here to two. And when I do that, you can see everything lights up. That means that we have enough of a signal path for things to work. And there's our 
basic oscillator. Now, if we want to change the pitch of it, we just change the pitch knob. And that's all it took to get something going inside a reactor. Pretty quick to get things started. Now, what we're going to do is <clears throat> we want to slave the pitch of this oscillator with another oscillator. So for demonstration purposes, let's just copy what we already have, hit paste, and I'm going to take the output from this oscillator and plug it into the sync input. Now, when we do that, we've got two pitch knobs over here. It's a little bit confusing as to who is what. So let's call this slave pitch. And then we're going to call this one master pitch. S-T-E-R-P-I-T-C-H. Great. And then we're going to edit our control panel so we can see each one of these separately. And then let's bring up the level. Now what's interesting is when I turn the slave pitch, it's not changing the pitch of the oscillator in the way that it did just a minute ago. We heard that nice clean sweep from low to high. What we're actually doing is changing the harmonic content. The pitch of this slave oscillator is controlled by this oscillator down here, which we call that master pitch. So let's listen to what happens when I move the master pitch. So the um, master oscillator, that is controlling the pitch of our slave oscillator. What we want to do is we want to replace this, this oscillator with the signal from the guitar. So how do we do that? We're going to delete that. And then I'm going to use the signal from the A string, which if, if you remember, that's input 7. And I'm going to write that, route that directly over to this input. And let's see if we hear anything. So right away, it sounds kind of gnarly. <laughs> Doesn't sound all that great. But that's all it took to get a signal from the guitar and use it to drive the pitch of an oscillator and create a basic, you know, guitar synthesizer. Now, there's a few things we can do to make it a little bit better. One thing, that signal that's coming from the guitar is a very low level signal compared to the signal from, you know, another oscillator. So I'm going to hit return again. And this time I'm going to add in another amplifier mixer. I'm going to take the signal from uh, the A string, number seven, and this time under the level control, I'm going to create a constant instead of a volume control, and I'm just going to give it a value of 100. And then I'm going to take the output and run that over here to my sync input, and let's turn our level control up again. Okay, so... Uh, Better. I, I, the, uh, I don't uh, have the uh, camera on the, the guitar right now, so you can't see what I'm playing, but it's, it's a little bit more reliable. It still sounds pretty gnarly. Um, how do we clean this up and make it work even better? Well, we're going to add a filter. So I'm going to hit the enter key, and I'm going to type in uh, FIL for filter. And we're going to, in honor of uh, Dr. Bob Moog, let's add a ladder filter. And we're going to filter out some of that high frequency information that's coming in from the A string. And if you've ever looked at any guitar synthesizer, whether it's hardware or software, one of the first things that you see is an input filter. Because what we want to do is we want to filter out the harmonics and we want to get down to just what is the fundamental of that uh, input signal. So I'm going to take the output from the mixer, plug it into the input. I'm going to take output four, low pass filter four, plug it into my sync input. And then let's give ourselves a little uh, control for this filter. So I'm going to right click here and say uh, create a control and that's our filter cutoff and when I do that then I need to clean this up a little bit so let's drag our filter cutoff down here now let's see Well, that uh, still has some room for improvement, 
But you can see with just a few simple little modules, we've been able to create kind of a very basic guitar synthesizer. Let's listen to that again. And I'm going to bring in a little bit of the uh, SY1000 model guitar with that. That's all it took to get started down this road of building a guitar synthesizer. So I, I expanded upon this. Uh, if we look at, let's see, recent files. Uh, so this is the final guitar synthesizer that, that I came up with. And you can see uh, for the input, I added in a compressor here rather than just an amplifier. Compressor is really uh, the way we want to go. But then we have the filtering. I added in two different uh, oscillators. So we could choose between either the pulse or the triangle wave. There's a mixer to allow us to uh, select which one of these we want to listen to. That's mostly pulse. That's uh, the triangle wave. And then we added in some additional modulation. So uh, if we choose a slow filter mod, there we are using an LFO to modulate the filter. And then there's also a uh, <laughs> You notice how uh, the uh, slave pitch has uh, can do radical things to the pitch of the sound. There's a there's a patch here called extreme modulation where I'm using uh, the LFO to modulate the pitch of those uh, slave oscillators. And so that's where we get some of that uh, uh, kind of crazy stuff. And there's another one here called electric distortion. Again, uh, modulating. And we can combine that again with the uh, model guitar. So I hope this gives you some ideas on some of the cool things you can do uh, with using the SY1000 and, and that really great feature of the USB stream, which gives you access to all six uh, guitar signals and building some kind of really awesome custom guitar synthesizer processors that no one's ever seen or heard of before.